So um, just to, uh, to help address a question that came up in the final minutes of that last session, uh, looks like Wade has been busy sort of looking a little bit to, to try to find out what broader support there is um, uh, to, to manipulate this data and shape files without doing it directly through any logic back. So, so the idea is, you know, what can we do? And so any logic environment is, this is Java. And one of the advantages of that is that Java is one of the most popular languages out there. Massive numbers of libraries for Java available for processing things. And so it sounds like Wade was looking into this further. And as I surmised, um, he had mentioned, you know, preliminary comments would suggest Java, there's a number of Java libraries that can parse shapefile formats. Um, uh, so, so basically, you wouldn't use in any logic mechanism to query what's my walkability index around this latitude and longitude of, of me, of, of myself as the agent. Rather, you would you would ask this. You you would parse that information at some level, and and then need to use say a library to, to query query that would be my my thought or otherwise you parse that information in a way that you could query it but wait do you want to comment on, on this I'm, I'm just summarizing up here yeah indeed yeah So, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Great. So, so Wade made an utterance of significance. So, I'm going to repeat it uh, for our remote listeners. So, he had commented that um, there's many ways to achieve this functionality, very likely. Uh, one might be through Java libraries to allow reading in these. Shape files, which of which there are a number, he said, and 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 then querying through them and to sort of find out what's at this certain latitude longitude of a given agent, for example, and, and going through that. But he said the way he did it was to take the information in the shape file, um, information of interest, say walkability information, or information on you know PPM 2.5 or whatever particulate matter or Prime index or whatever it is, export that information in a way that could then be read in very readily by by the model, and and used to kind of used in the model to mark certain areas as as being having certain characteristics. Is that the basic gist of it, Dave? Yeah, and. Um, there's a number of any logic models that uh, I'll note um, uh, you know, we've seen over the years. One of them is actually built in to, to any logic, um, which, which have a somewhat similar philosophy. And I'm, I'm just going to share my screen just so people could, could see this. This is a model which, which I have strong critiques of in, in some of its implementations. I find it quite objectionable, some parts of its implementation, but um, it, it does have some utility. It's called wandering elephants. It's in the example model series. It's called wandering elephants. And the wandering elephants model has a kind of pseudo geographic environment, which is occupied by two types of proboscideans. Um, Thirsty elephants and happy and free elephants. You can tell this wasn't built by a veterinarian or something. And, um, and it has this grid, and the grid is populated by information, um, which is, is read into it, or, or read into it, I think, from a 
from a file, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and um, it, it's from this vegetation index. And if, if you go and run this thing, what you'll see is that this, uh, that this geographic information or pseudo-geographic information can be, um, you know, can be plotted either in terms of the amount of, veg of vegetation as a dynamic quantity versus changing over time. And the elephants are, are interacting with the vegetation in a way that, that consumes it. Um, and then there's altitude map. So this is an example of kind of environmental information. Um, which is stored in the model and with which the agents interact in a reciprocal fashion. The agents browse in areas with vegetation and they thereby denude the vegetation. Um, and they move around this, this kind of environment with um, marked by topography, which um, limits vegetation in some region. So, uh, this is an example of sort of how one could manipulate, you know, GIS type information in mechanisms in the model uh, without relying on any logic to tell you, you know, what is the vegetation at me? Instead, it uses an internal data structure called an array to say, what's, my, what's the vegetation around? Me? So I, I think this, this is an example of how you could read in data and put it into a, a data structure that you would just manipulate from my environment, including walking. Um, so I'll you know, comment, um, maybe, maybe that's useful, um, but uh, it's a good model to, to know about in any case. And um, where it gets really interesting in terms of dynamics of this model is if you run it you know, very, very quickly and, and you know, start to see the elephants uh, altering the landscape compared to its original sort of thing. Oh, <laughs> okay. I ran it, I guess, too far. Um, uh, so, Wade, you saw that. Yeah. Um, could not find way out. Okay. I guess an elephant. Oh, maybe it's this one here. This elephant, I think, got stuck on the edge of the world. Um, okay. Um, great. So let's close the watering elephants and let's go on to other types of topics. In a way, what we've just been discussing though is fodder for thought for this next discussion. We can bring together models with data. Um, that's really what I wanted to talk about here. So uh, let's speak about models and their relationship to data. I'm gonna give some overall comments here and then we're gonna get down into really nitty gritty specifics. Um, indeed, okay. Oh, 